So I'll, really quickly, I'm just going to launch an AWS instance. Uh, I'm just going to like import one of my keys. So let me just grab that for a sec. I missed the eight, but that's okay. Beautiful. Okay. And I want to launch an instance with this key, something that most people have probably done, but I want to simulate like a web application. All right. So I'm going to call this instance app. I'm going to use the Ubuntu uh, AMI, the public one. I'm going to make this a T3 uh, micro because I don't need anything else besides that. I'm going to tell it to use my newly imported SSH key pair, and I'm going to allow SSH and HTTP because my example web application will be served over HTTP. And I'm going to allow it from the internet because this is just a demo, uh, nothing you know, too, too secure going on here, right? And everything else I'll leave as default, and then I'll just go ahead and launch this instance. And AWS is pretty, um, pretty quick about launching instances, so... If I click the instance ID, I should see it here and it is, it's starting up. So this will, this is kind of like what a typical deployment process would look like for a company, maybe today, right? You, someone goes out and they create a VM and they say, here's your infrastructure, go ahead and deploy your app to it. Right. So I'll wait for this to start uh, running. And when it does, I'm just going to like SSH to it and wait for it to be ready. Cool. All right. So this is ready. So what does like a typical deployment process look like for an app like this, right? Where, where you have infrastructure and then they, they hand off the infrastructure to you and say, Hey, go deploy your app. Well, generally you have like some sort of deployment process, right? And I put air quotes, cause that can just be any process that you have. Ansible, Chef, um, you can build your own images, et cetera, et cetera. I just have this little bash, bash script here. That's going to go ahead and connect to my instance and deploy my application, right? Uh, so you'll see that it just SS, SSHs and SCPs a file over. Um, and let's take a look at the install file. And all of this, my example web application here is just installing Nginx and like serving a, a static HTML page, right? And you'll notice here, I have a version here, 1.0.0. So this is my example web app. So let's go ahead and deploy this. So I could run uh, deploy. And I just need the host. So it'll go ahead and copy my script up, run the deployment. And now this is simulating like a mutable uh, deployment, right? So I am connecting to existing infrastructure and I am modifying it. I am mutating it to be the state that I need it to be for my app deployment, right? This is similar to what Ansible does, Chef, whatever it may be, Puppet that you're using. Uh, all it does is just connect to the SSH transfer some files, run those files and come back, right? So this is um, simulating that sort of deployment. So if I open up my application, which is not using HTTPS, it's only using HTTP, you'll see that I have it uh, running and it's version one. And a typical update to a deployment like this would be modifying whatever script that you use to deploy. And you would go like, you know, version two, you would save it and you would redeploy it, right? This is a typical life cycle of deployments for mutable infrastructure. Now, if I refresh, I have version 2.0. Okay. So what, what's kind of the problem with this approach? Well, the, the problem with like mutable infrastructure is that there's a lot of unknowns, right? You are taking infrastructure that was spun up and you are constantly mutating it to do your deployments. What can happen? Your dependencies can get out of date your application might not actually be the correct version. You can get, you might have version one deployed and then to get to version two requires some updates and some scripts that run and maybe those scripts fail. So now you're in this weird gray zone where you're not version one and you're not version two, you're like version 1.7 or something. Uh, all of those things can happen during a mutable deployment, right? And the biggest one that I've seen is dependencies being out of date, right? If you've managed... 10 or 20 servers and you're doing mutable deployments to each of them, well, they're not always going to match each other, right? You might have one version of Java on this server and one version of Java on that server, or you might have one version of Nginx on this server, one version of Nginx on that server. And we call that configuration drift, right? Now you can say, hey, Matt, well, I'm going to pin my software and I'm going to do this and I'm going to prevent that. Great, you, you are. But then the underlying OS packages will change underneath you, right? 
like because you're patching cycles that can break deployments too. So mutable infrastructure is great to start out, but it quickly becomes a burden when you have differences across your application that cause bugs, that cause downtime, right? So given this, right, we have a, we have a, a piece of infrastructure out here, this, this one instance that's out here, and you could ignore the uh, other ones that I was messing around with earlier, but we have one of our app instances running. How can we now use Terraform to start bringing this mutable infrastructure under management of Terraform, right? Because we want to start doing our deploys with Terraform and managing our infrastructure with Terraform. What can we do to start bringing this in? Well, what we need is first, we need a Terraform configuration file. So I know I'm going to kind of like, I'm not going to go, you know, Terraform 101 so much here, but the TLDR is that Terraform needs to work with a certain provider, right? Providers being AWS, GCP, Azure, whatever, wherever you're deploying your infrastructure. So I configured Terraform here that say, hey, I want to work with AWS. And the three resources that I want to manage are going to be a key pair, a security group, and an instance. And those are the three resources that I created in the UI when I clicked around, right? Uh, I created the key pair because I imported it. And when I created the instance, it created a security group for me, right? When I said SSH and HTTP. So if you want to bring existing infrastructure under management of Terraform, you do what's called an import, right? So the very first thing you would do is you would define the infrastructure in your Terraform configuration file. And then you would Terraform init this configuration file, let it download the providers that you're using. So in this case, it downloaded the AWS provider. So now Terraform knows how to speak AWS things. And one of the things it knows how to speak is import, right? So I can do Terraform import. I have to give it the address of my, of my configuration that I want to import. In this case, it was AWS key pair dot app. And then I have to tell it which key pair to import. And if I go to my key pairs, the only one that I have is pseudo Mateo. So I will import this one. It'll reach out to AWS. It'll say, hey, I found a key pair there. I'll bring it back and import it. And you'll see this lovely message saying import successful. Uh, and now you'll notice that though, that my configuration hasn't changed, right? And if I went to go run a Terraform plan right now to plan the changes to this infrastructure, I'll get an error. It says, hey, you're missing a required argument on that key pair resource that you're imported. But no fear, since I've imported it already, it's in my Terraform state file. So if I were to do a Terraform state show, uh, sorry, just a Terraform show, I'll print out my entire state file and I will see my key pair here. So I can go ahead and take this and put it into my configuration here. And then you'll notice that there's all these attributes here that I never really set. Some of these attributes Terraform generates for you automatically. So they're not needed in your configuration file. Uh, some of them are like RN fingerprint ID. I don't need these. And you would know which ones you need and which ones you don't need by like running Terraform plan and reading the documentation and so on and so forth. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to kind of go through it. So the only attribute that I really set here was key name, right? But it also told me that there's a required attribute called public key that I never set. So I'm going to set that right now to be the um, public key file that's on my machine. And now at this point, if I plan this, you'll see that it's going to say, hey, you got it in here, but I need to replace this instance. And you might wonder like, wait, why are you going to destroy my key pair and uh, replace it? Well, if you would read the docs about this, about importing, if you go to the Terraform docs, you'll see this beautiful warning note. Basically, the AWS API doesn't give you the public key once it's created. So Terraform has to do this recreation in order to know what the public key is. So that's fine. So I'm going to let that one, one happen, and I'm going to actually apply this. So now it's going to destroy and recreate my key pair. And in here, boom, my key pair is still there, recreated. And if I did a Terraform plan again, no changes are going to be um, there. Okay, great. So I have my key pair. What's next? Well, looking at my uh, main.tf file, the next thing would be the security group. So let's go ahead and uncomment this and import it, right? So same idea, Terraform import, 
AWS security group dot app. And then I need the security group identifier to know which one to import. How can I find that? Go back to my instance, go to security tab and go to security group. And I can get the ID from here, copy that, paste it here. And now I'm importing the security group. Same song and dance. I still have to update the configuration to tell Terraform what I've set versus what it like generates. So I'll do the same thing. Terraform show. And you'll now see that the security groups here. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to put it into my configuration and I'll put it right where I had this and I'll delete that. And I'll start now deleting the, the, the fields I didn't set, right? Again, you would know this by reading the documentation and knowing which fields are settable versus which fields are generated, right? Uh, so I don't need the ARN, the egress I need, but the format for it in Terraform is a block, not a list. So I need to like clean up the format here. Uh, I don't need any of these like security group stuff here. And I like to move the two port and the front port next to each other. Uh, the ID gets automatically generated. Don't need that. Right. So I'm just cleaning up the configuration so that Terraform knows how to read this. And I'm doing this a little fast because this is not the, you know, main point of the talk here. So if you want to learn more about importing, I'm happy to chat about that more at a future time. But for this one, I just want to get it all going. Cool. I've now got the security group in a place where the configuration matches reality. If I were to plan this now, Terraform is not a command. If I were to plan this, no changes. This is what we want. Reality and Terraform match, right? So there's no changes here. Let's do the instance now. So I'll go ahead and scroll up and grab the instance ID. I will uncomment the instance in this file. Terraform import AWS instance dot app, and then the ID, right? So we're mapping in an identifier to a Terraform configuration. Same idea, Terraform show. And now I see my instances all the way up here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab all of that stuff and bring it into my configuration file and put it right here. And a lot of this goes away because I didn't set any of this, right? This is all auto generated. I didn't specify root block device. I didn't specify metadata options or any of this stuff. So let me just clean this one up real quick as well. Yep. Only thing I set was the instance type, the key name, and the tags and the security group. So these are the only things that I set when I created this instance. Again, now if I were to plan this again, you'll see that it should show no changes. This is a successful import. All of my infrastructure now is managed under Terraform. It's still mutable, right? I can still run my deploy and, or I can still modify my install script and do like version, you know, 3.0. And I'll just put import on the, on the side to note that I import it. And I can still run the deploy. And I'm still in a mutable state. But now my infrastructure is managed as Terra with Terraform. I'm setting myself up to go towards being immutable, right? And if I refresh this page, it's version 300 import. 